Hey, it's your old pal Lucid Stew again. Recently, the California High Speed Rail Authority released its draft environmental impact statement for its Los Angeles to Anaheim segment. This is a 30-mile portion of the project from Los Angeles Union Station in downtown Los Angeles to the Anaheim Regional Transportation Intermodal Center in Anaheim. This is the only portion of California High Speed Rail's 489-mile long phase one from Anaheim to San Francisco yet to be environmentally cleared. We're going to explore this document in detail and see what changes are coming on the local level. So get cozy with some hot cocoa or eggnog and we'll get started on the southern end in Anaheim. Here we are at Arctic. This is a signature building in the Anaheim area located across the freeway from the Big A, which is the home of the California Angels. Arctic is also located about two miles from the Disney Resorts, which are also in Anaheim. Arctic is a regional intermodal hub hosting Orange County Transportation Authority bus service and train service by Amtrak and Metrolink. There's also a bus link to Disney. The plan here is to build a new island platform and station facility on the south side of the existing platforms. Like the current platforms, this new island platform would extend under the State Route 57 freeway. From the drawings, it appears that the island platform format was the only way to squeeze everything under the 57 overcrossing without having to rebuild it. The new station facility would connect to the current station's pedestrian bridge that conveys passengers to the station's southern platform. There will also be pickup and drop off access on the southern side of the new platforms west of the freeway in part of what is currently the Angel Stadium parking lot. Arctic's parking lot is busy but not exactly packed. Nevertheless, the California High Speed Rail Authority anticipates a huge surge in patronage such that it will necessitate the construction of a multi story parking garage between the Arctic station and the freeway. The current parking lot will also be replaced by a park, but I'll get into that in a minute. The new parking garage will then be connected to Arctic's pedestrian bridge with yet another pedestrian bridge. That will allow most passengers to bypass the Arctic station, which is unfortunate because it makes for a grand entrance and exit. Nearby construction on the OC Vibe project is humming along. This is a mixed-use sort of neo-downtown area centered around the Honda Center Arena and the Arctic station. Plans for this have evolved over time with residential becoming more prominent and now promising to consume half the project with a total of 2,500 residences. The project also includes the aforementioned park, retail, office space, hotels, and a set of enormous parking structures with 8,000 spaces, which you can see being worked on here when I was down there in May of 2025. Half of those parking structures are done already. All of that promises to integrate nicely with California High Speed Rail whenever it manages to get to Anaheim. Speaking of that, the EIS includes a fantasy construction schedule which has this section completed by 2038. There's no way that's happening. Not even in the best case scenario where $100 billion falls out of the sky is that happening. To be clear, the California High Speed Rail Authority has no opening date for Phase 1, and there is no funding to build any section outside of the Central Valley. What this tells you since this schedule is from September of 2023 is that they've known internally that Phase 1 wasn't happening by 2033, as was indicated by them as late as 2022, but they didn't bother to mention that to anyone. Back to the route straight out of Arctic to the west, the right-of-way currently crosses State College Boulevard at grade. This is a major six-lane arterial road through the area. For California High Speed Rail, this intersection will be grade-separated with the roadway moving under a future rail bridge while the rails remain at grade. Just past that, the route will cross the Union Pacific Tustin Branch at grade. This brings up at-grade crossings because there will be 13, including the UP crossing. Eight of the remaining will be road crossings, and those road crossings will all be in Anaheim. They will be at Ball, Vermont, South, Santa Ana, Broadway, Sycamore, La Palma, and Orangethorpe. This is a mix of two, four, and six lane streets with Ball and Orangethorpe being the busiest. In terms of traffic disruption in the future, you can expect these crossings to close roughly five times an hour for passenger traffic. 
Back to the UP crossing just north of there is Cerritos Avenue, and that will be altered to run under tracks, like State College. For Anaheim, the takeaway is that construction will be concentrated in the area around Arctic, and disruption elsewhere in Anaheim should be fairly minimal. There will also be two layover tracks around Cerritos Avenue. Those will hold trains that are meant to start their day at Anaheim. Here's a chart that shows where trains will start their day and how many in a future where phase one is completely open. Those will come from the light maintenance facility we'll talk about later and a few will hang out at the layover tracks until the first few trains leave the station for Merced or San Francisco in the morning. Since we've mentioned that, let's look at the schedule in the EIS that shows what hypothetical phase one service would look like. You have two daily express trains from Los Angeles to San Francisco, a handful of limiteds that will skip some of the more useless stations like Kings to Larry, and then everything else is a local with everything terminating at either San Francisco, San Jose, Merced, LA, or Anaheim. All told, it's supposed to be between 164 and 192 trains a day. Back to Anaheim, the plan more or less boils down to electrifying the two tracks that are there, getting rid of a couple of grade separations, and adding a new platform. This is made fairly simple by the tracks being owned by the Orange County Transportation Authority, which is part of the Southern California Regional Rail Authority, which oversees Metrolink, Southern California's commuter and regional rail service. North of Anaheim, that situation changes as tracks curve west and join BNSF right of way at Fullerton. California High Speed Rail recently released an animation of how Fullerton is going to work. The northern two tracks will carry freight, the southern two will be passenger tracks. In the BNSF right of way, the two passenger tracks will be electrified, but BNSF will retain the right to use those tracks when it doesn't interfere with passenger service. Since we're talking about service, let me drop this bombshell top speed on the 30 mile LA to Anaheim segment will be 90 miles per hour. So it won't be high speed, it will be electrified conventional that will be attached to high speed tracks north of Burbank. The train will not exceed 110 miles per hour anywhere between Burbank and Anaheim, so you can get visions of zipping around LA at 200 miles per hour out of your head now. By the California High Speed Rail Authority's own estimates, these trains will be no faster than Metrolink between LA and Anaheim, which is probably down to scheduling. By the way, that's estimated to cost $6.6 .6 billion in 2023 dollars, which is $7 billion in current year dollars and more like $11 billion around the earliest time they could actually manage to build it. Which begs the question, if it won't be any faster than Metrolink, and Metrolink is planning to start running half-hourly service before the 2028 Olympics, why are we going to spend $11 billion on this? You tell me. Let me know how it's worth $11 billion in the comments. Back to Fullerton, California High-Speed Rail won't stop there. They have Fullerton and Norwalk as possible additional stops, and they chose to include neither in the preferred alternative. The fact that this will be an express train between Anaheim and LA means it will probably be faster than Metrolink in practice, but not by much as the EIS mentions that top speed will be as low as 45 miles per hour in spots. At Fullerton, the separation of tracks means that some service for Metrolink and Amtrak will shift to an island platform between the passenger tracks. Trains coming into the area from Riverside would continue to stop at the northern platform next to the depot. West of the Fullerton Station, California High Speed Rail will navigate around a BNSF yard. There is plenty of room for that, but just west of that, the new tracks will briefly escape the right-of-way, taking out several industrial buildings in the process before entering a trench at Fullerton Municipal Airport. The trench will act as a crossover, and passenger tracks will switch sides with freight moving from the southern side to the northern side of the right-of-way, this will occur between Gilbert and Dale, which are only a mile apart, so grades into and out of the trench will be as high as 2.7%. One victim of this crossover will be the Metrolink Buena Park station, which doesn't quite fit into the space needed to merge the passenger tracks back in from the north. That station will be moved two blocks west, adjacent to Beach Boulevard. That's a better station location anyway, as Beach is a major six-lane street through the area, while the current station is tucked into a subdivision and not super intuitive to find. The need for that crossover is twofold. 
The first part is that it lets passenger tracks avoid the BNSF La Mirada yard to the north at ground level, a mile northwest of the newly planned Buena Park station. Otherwise, they would need to elevate the line through there. Just northwest of that is the Rosecrans and Marquardt grade separation, which is actually already done, partially thanks to California high-speed rail funds. All told, there will be about 70 crossings over the 30 miles. About half of those will require some work. Of those, only 10 will be new grade separations. I'm only going to talk about the major ones that will affect traffic in the area whenever they manage to start construction. Northwest of Rosecrans and Marquardt is the second reason for switching sides in the trench near Fullerton Municipal, the Norwalk Santa Fe Springs Transportation Station. Like Fullerton, this was a potential California high-speed rail stop that has been rejected for now. However, the station for Metrolink will be completely reworked as passenger tracks cut the corner here to the east of freight tracks. Tracks and the platforms will both be elevated with room left for an additional pair of express tracks that would be added later if California High Speed Rail decided to add a stop here. That would be way off into the future. Parking and station facilities would be located at ground level. Some sort of tractor trailer storage yard would be sacrificed to make that happen. The area around the Norwalk station is another place where California high-speed rail tracks will escape the BNSF right away for a bit, taking out several mostly industrial properties. Just north of the Norwalk station, the passenger tracks will switch sides again, but this time on an aerial structure. All told, the aerial structure here will be two miles long. Considering it includes both a station and a crossover, this promises to be the most impressive structure in phase one, outside of the longest tunnels and the crazy 10-mile-long viaduct that would run through Bakersfield. The crossing of Lakeland Road here will count as a new grade separation as passenger tracks will still be on aerial structure at that point, while freight will continue to cross that street at grade. A mile and a half north of there is another grade separation project. Tracks cross Los Nieros Road and Norwalk Boulevard in rapid succession, that interaction will be separated with both streets moving under the rail right-of-way, which will remain at ground level. Norwalk is a major north-south street through the area, so construction promises to be fairly disruptive. This is also right by an at-grade rail crossing that will be left as is. Just west of that is Pioneer Boulevard, which is one of the trickier road crossings in the section because of its junction with Rivera Road right next to the rail right-of-way the authority will opt to close Rivera Road at Pioneer. They will then take out a couple of houses between Pioneer and the 605 freeway to convert an alley into an access road that will give a pocket of 23 otherwise isolated houses access to Pioneer. Pioneer will then cross under the rail right-of-way, which will remain at ground level. Then right after that is another at-grade rail crossing before the route goes over the San Gabriel River. I think this section right here is part of the reason the LA Anaheim portion has no high speed aspirations. To get this area to work without at grade crossings, you're looking at three miles of high viaduct through mostly residential with two curves that would limit speed to 90 miles per hour anyway. Two and a half miles to the west, after crossing the San Gabriel River and the Rio Hondo on new bridges, we run into the new location of the Commerce Metrolink station. We'll get into why that would be moved in a minute. Like the current Commerce Station, there is nothing special about this location. It will also be tucked into an industrial area, but at least it will be reasonably close to some houses in Montebello. The current station is outright desolate. Let's cross Interstate 5 and talk about what will happen there. BNSF has a lot of facilities down there, including the massive Hobart Intermodal Facility, so their track network is a tangled web. To navigate that, the new pair of passenger tracks will move through a significant portion of the area on viaduct. This includes three separate crossings of freight track over a little more than a mile before coming back down to the ground. The eastern approach to that viaduct is planned to move directly through the current Commerce Station site, so it has to go. South of the Hobart Yard is the planned site for the California High-Speed Rail Light Maintenance Facility. 
This is where they would keep trains overnight, wash them, and perform routine inspections and maintenance. The yard is planned to consume 49 acres of industrial properties and will have space for 24 train sets. Sets starting their day at Anaheim and LA Union will originate there. To accommodate the site, 26th Street will be relocated about 600 feet to the southwest toward Bandini. West of their tracks will cross the LA River on the existing flyover ramp owned by LA Metro. In that area, they're basically just electrifying LA Metro tracks. North of that, next to the LA River, the two electrified tracks combined with a couple of storage tracks will be accommodated by taking over space currently used for storage track by BNSF. This means BNSF needs to be compensated with additional storage elsewhere nearby. There is currently some controversy to this. That portion of the segment is actually controlled by LA Metro as part of their effort to reconfigure LA Union Station into a through-running station, as it is currently a terminus. LA Metro's solution is to expand the BNSF Malabar Yard in nearby Vernon. The problem is that the city of Vernon does not want this. That is being negotiated currently. There is plenty of time to figure it out. And then finally, also as part of the Link Us project, tracks will hook into LA Union Station in a tight S-curve on a huge flyover ramp that will cross the Hollywood Freeway. That could accommodate somewhere between 4 and 10 tracks. Link Us is in the draft environmental impact statement phase, so plans have not fully solidified but California High Speed Rail will have two island platforms accommodating four tracks at LA Union Station. How long those will be is up in the air still. Once at LA Union, passengers would have access to an expansive local and regional transit network that includes light rail, subway, and commuter rail. Those options are expanding with LA Metro's D-Line extension and LAX's People Mover set to open soon. Metrolink is also planning to move to half-hourly service throughout its network ahead of the 2028 Olympics. LA Metro is also working on designing a new subway line into the valley under the Sepulveda Pass that will almost surely be operating before California High Speed Rail manages to get to LA. LA Union would also connect Anaheim to the rest of the California High Speed Rail network, getting passengers from Anaheim to San Francisco in about four hours or Anaheim to Bakersfield in about two hours, if you will. I rarely share any conclusions on these things, but I've always questioned why Metrolink can't perform this function, since they're basically planning to anyway. Granted, part of the LMF would be necessary, and LA Metro is handling through running at LA Union, but does a one-seat ride for an extra 30 miles at conventional speeds justify the cost of billions? Also, since the California High-Speed Rail Authority is so desperate to trim costs that it's uh, talking about trimming Merced from initial construction, why not trim this too? They're short $100 billion on Phase 1 funding. They can't afford this, which is why it'll be happening in the Star Trek timeline. But what do you think? Is electrification of this 90 mile per hour stub vital to the state, or can it wait? Let me know in the comments. Plenty more videos to come. I'm not sure what's next. All this new California High Speed Rail information gummed up my release schedule, but I'm going to try to get at least a couple more long-form videos out before the end of the year. If you'd like to support the channel and leave me a little present, check out that super thanks button below the video or visit my poster store and snap up a holiday gift. Everything is 30% off. But procrastinators be warned, time from shipping to delivery is 8 to 10 days. So I can't say for sure if things will show up before Christmas at this point. But that's all for now. Until next time, I'll see you on that big beautiful freeway.